the concentration camps of World War II, in the eyes of many to this day, quite possibly the darkest chapter of human history. In the words of Theodor Adorno, there is no art after Auschwitz. Yet observing the actions, the cruelty, and the vacuum of humanity that made these camps possible is an essential responsibility. The Holocaust would turn Poland into a place name in the Nazi effort to exterminate the Jewish population. Disturbingly, the fascism behind this spread throughout the continent and extended to populations including the Romani, Sinti, ethnic Polish, and disabled German populations. The gas chambers of the concentration camps have left an indelible image in our collective history and somehow there was further savagery. The experiments littered the cruel, barbarous history of the concentration camps. Deprivations, operations, exposure, and outright murders all befall prisoners of the camps in the name of medical science. Welcome to History on Fleek. Today we examine the experiments of World War II. Arguably the most chilling experimentation found in concentration camps was the transplantation of bones, muscles, and even nerves from prisoners. Starting in late 1942 through to December 1943, such experiments took place at Ravensbrück concentration camp. Given the context, it may come as no surprise, but not a single subject in these experiments was given anesthesia. That's right, bone, muscle, and nerves are removed from people's bodies without a drop of pain relief. These faux operations left victims in blinding, intense agony, and they were given no aftercare. Deposition from a young Polish victim details that she was operated on twice and neither time was told exactly what was being done to her. Some accounts reveal prisoners had bacteria injected into their bone marrow. This was done for the development of battlefield drugs, apparently. Those subjected, however, were left disfigured for life. The overwhelming majority of people subjected to these experiments were left with permanent disability and mutilation. The most consistent experimentation found at the concentration camps was the use of mustard gas on the prisoner population. Like many experiments conducted at the camps, this was done for the benefit of the German army soldiers. The Nazis wanted to know how to treat chemical wounds and burns, and they'd harbored entire populations they'd robbed of all humanity, entire populations to be used as test subjects. For a spell that nearly lasted the duration of the Second World War, from September 1939 to April 1945, camp prisoners were exposed to mustard gas and sulfonamide, and even injected with chemical gas agents to inflict the worst of injuries. These same prisoners would then have their wounds tested to find the best treatment. But this was not for them. It was for the benefit of the German soldiers marching their way through Europe and beyond. Any understanding of the grim human experimentation in concentration camps demands the attention of one individual above any, Josef Mengele. A man of such lethal consequence, he will be eternally remembered in the annals of history as the Angel of Death. Before the outbreak of World War II, Mengele had studied medicine and anthropology at the doctorate level. Even before joining the Nazi party in 1937, the promise of Mengele's medical fascination was showing teeth. His doctorate was a study in genetics and malformations resulting. So astute were these works on cleft palates, lips, and chins, they were in line with mainstream science of the time. Authors have noted, publications of Mengele's studies were likely to have been valid works beyond Nazi Germany at the time. However, not a soul could have imagined just how perverted and costly this one man's foray into medicine would become. Five years after joining the SS, Mengele would become the chief physician of the Romani family subcamp in Birkenau in 1943. There began two long years of subjecting human beings to lesser treatment than lab rats.
Among the most hideous of experimentation were the high-altitude experiments orchestrated at Dachau. At the start of 1942, SS Dr. Sigmund Rascher started selecting camp prisoners to conduct high-altitude tests for German pilots. Using a low-pressure chamber, prisoners were subjected to depressurization that would simulate the effect of altitudes as high as 68,000 feet. Weakened, starved people, already subjected to hard labor, would be brought to this full-body trauma. Rascher would correspond with Heinrich Himmler over three experiments, and their results, one account details, a 37-year-old man asphyxiating before Rascher's eyes. The correspondence holds nothing but sterile scientific coldness. Documents show us that 200 concentration camp prisoners were subject to the testing. 80 would be killed from the low-pressure chamber testing. The remaining 120 would be murdered afterward. Little known of the many human experiments conducted at concentration camps was the use of seawater consumption. Yep, no doubt, once again for the benefit of German pilots downed over the Atlantic Ocean, the Nazis sought to find a means to make seawater drinkable. For three months in the middle of 1944, Dr. Sigmund Rascher selected a group of Roma prisoners to consume nothing but filtered seawater. The experiment, lo and behold, left all participants dangerously, dangerously unwell. One such experiment conducted on 90 Roma prisoners left them so fiercely dehydrated they were witnessed licking recently mopped floors in desperation. Other accounts would state subjects of the experiment would wring out old floor rags in the hope of finding drinkable water. Depleted, starved, and hurled into dehydration, it's unlikely many survived this experiment. Those who did, like many who witnessed this and other experiments, were sent to gas chambers to their deaths. Under the orders of the Luftwaffe, experimentation included subjecting camp prisoners to freezing conditions to study hypothermia. These experiments began in 1941, and around 400 were conducted. Many prisoners would have been subjected to the testing on more than one occasion. Sigmund Rascher would oversee freezing experiments in Dachau. In 1942, camp prisoners suffered sitting in freezing water tanks for as long as three hours. All the prisoners would then be subjected to efforts of rewarming their bodies. Needless to say, many of these maltreated and weakened individuals died in the process. As the human cost continued to play out, the experiment's purpose was obliviously pursued. Camp prisoners would be made to dress in fighter pilot uniforms before being submerged in the water, sometimes as cold as minus six degrees Celsius. Much of this hypothermia experimentation was pursued in the protection of German soldiers, hoping to make ground on the Eastern Front. However, the debasing of people subjected to the experiment was apparently bottomless. That, folks, is rock bottom. Doesn't get any worse. This is History on Fleek, and we'll see you next time.